Yeah. Okay, okay. Some good points that you both made. Um, pick, I'll take your point and then your point. Your point was about reading the scriptures and there's different interpretations. And I would grant you that. There are different interpretations, but there is a general understanding of what Christianity is. That Christ died and rose again. That he is the Son of God now. There is either truth or there's no truth. If there is truth, there is some interpretation that gives you the truth. As to a, an interpretation that doesn't give you the truth. So there's a central issue who Jesus is. And most Christians, with most denominations in their creeds, go back to the Apostolic Creed, the Athanasius Creed, and all these talk about Jesus as the Son of God. Right? But there are periphery interpretations, like the interpretation of end times, or, like, for example, Origen. Origen was an early church father, and when he was a young man, he read the text. Only eunuchs would get into heaven. Right? So he cut his didgeridoo. Right? But then when he got to be an older man, he realized his interpretation was wrong. <laughs> right? So that's proving your point. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. I'll, I'll come to you because you've some, said some good things. But just that interpretation, you're right. I've just showed you that you're right on one level that people get the weird interpretation. But what I'm trying to say, there's some basic things, there's some basic things that every Christian does agree on in a simple way. Yeah. Apart from the cults, for example, cults like the Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, they're a cult because they say they're the only ones and nobody else. And they shut people off from thinking. See, if, I, if you become a Christian, I'm not going to stop you from thinking. Yeah, I'm not going to say, don't read this, don't read that. You read the Bible, but you can think it through. Yeah. Whereas cults try to brainwash you and say, don't read this, don't read that. So, so, so coming on to your question about divisions in, in, and is there only one, one true God? Well, the Bible teaches about Yahweh in the Old Testament. And then Christ comes and he talks about that he is with the Father and they are one. So the Bible's revealing that the God of the Bible is one God with three persons. One of them is Jesus Christ. Right? And that is the God of the Bible. So when you say there's only one God, the Hindu would see God as everything, like a pantheism. You know? The uh, the the uh, the Islamic God. They don't believe in a Trinitarian God. They don't believe Jesus is God. The Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe Jesus is God. The Mormons believe in multiple gods, polytheism. Not just one God, but there are many gods. We can be a God. So when you say there's only one God, it's not as simple as that. There, there is only one God as in the Bible. Others are distortions of the one God, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point. From from the biblical perspective, the Bible in Romans chapter one and Acts chapter seventeen, Paul mentions that creation speaks of God. That that creation shows there's a God, like the complexity of it, the beauty of it. So all the other religions are striving and sense there is a God and their expressions, Hinduism, Islam and all the other expressions are expressions of fallen humanity from the biblical perspective, seeking God. But 
God has a revelation. We believe that God stepped into time and spoke. And so if God stepped into time and spoke, that revelation is important. And the revelation is about redemption. So there is a, a revelation in the book that is telling us about how God is going to redeem us, save us. And so if you're not in the revelation, finding the story of the redemption, even though you're outside it, <coughs> you're striving for God, but you're doing it in your own religious way, you're missing the story of the redemption that God has given in the book. Does that make sense? It really <coughs> okay, that's a good point. Because <coughs> from the biblical perspective, the Bible talks about in Galatians, the Lord is given the Ten Commandments. It's a good question. The Ten Commandments do not lie. Do not steal, do not commit adultery. Now these Ten Commandments were given not just to follow, but to show our imperfection. So every human being that does good deeds, every human being, according to the Bible, even the perfect human being, is flawed. It's flawed. Everybody has sin. Right. Now that sin has to be forgiven. It cannot be atoned by you doing good deeds. Like for example, if you murdered someone, let's say you went over there and you murdered someone, but then for the rest of your life you did good deeds. That you, yeah, you've got to be accountable for that guilt. Right? So people can do all the good deeds in other religions and in Christianity, but if they don't have the guilt dealt with, the deeds are not going to help them. <laughs> the deeds are not going to help them, you see. So they've got to be forgiveness. And God provided the forgiveness in sending Jesus Christ to die for you. So instead of you getting punished for the murder that you've done, when Jesus came and they whipped him and they mocked him, John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. So the Lamb of God, Jesus, is dying on that cross taking away your sin. In other words, instead of you being judged for that murder, he's dying as a murderer for you. Let, let, let me finish, let me finish. Let me finish. So he's dying as a murderer for you. Right? So he died and rise again. Now, if you confess and say, Lord, forgive me, you receive that forgiveness. Not, not on account of what you have done. Not on account of what you have done, but on account of what he has done. Now you do good deeds, but the good deeds are out of gratitude of the grace that God has shown you. So without that grace of forgiveness, those outside it are missing the main thing, the forgiveness. You see, does that make sense now? Yeah. So you've got to have that guilt dealt with, and that was a brilliant question that you asked. But you see, in order for you to get your questions answered you've got to be willing like you're willing you're a nice agnostic and you're willing to come into my world and to look at the bible and to look at christian theology yes that's it that's it but, but you get the answers if you're willing to come into the christian world and study it study the scriptures and if you study the scriptures and you're open-minded you'll find the truth you know Religion, yeah. I, I, I think that's a good point. You're making a good point. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. It's <laughs> a good one. It's a good one. But I'm trying to keep it simple. But but he's asking some good questions, and I have to unpack it a little bit to to, to give you some sense of answering it for you, rather than trying to duck it. And we, we don't all have the answers, you know, there are questions that I won't be able to answer, but, but God, if, if you seek the truth, you'll find it. Okay, God bless you, God bless you. You can, you can get me on jasonbirdspreacher.com. No, no, no. Okay. The library, yeah, the library's down, 
Down there, bro. You go, you go down there. You go straight down there. It's about five minutes walk. Just take, when you get to the end of these buildings, you see a big round building that's the line. God bless you. Take care of God bless you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you something, bro. 